So where I grew up at home in, in Thurles, uh, on our farm, we had a long fence <coughs> running along uh, one side of, of the house, well, one side of the lawn, and I really, really, really wanted to paint it. I really, well, we used to use a, 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 a product that's now illegal called Cresuit. It's a, a black, smells really strong uh, kind of thing. It's a wood preservative. Uh, it's off the market. Now, anyway, point being, I really wanted to, to paint the fence. The reason I want, wanted to paint the fence was I had uh, previously seen a movie known as Karate Kid, uh, and in this movie, Mr. Miyagi tells Mr. Car Daniel, I think it was his name, Danny or Daniel, Danny, that um, uh, he gets beaten, that Danny gets beaten up uh, in school by some guys who belong to a uh, karate club, okay? So he comes to Mr. Miyagi, and uh, he wants to learn karate, right? So Mr. Miyagi then, in first step of his teaching him karate, is that he has to paint a fence, a white, white picket fence in his case. Okay, and he says, right, so I'll paint the fence, and then you'll teach me karate? Okay. And then after painting the fence, he has to polish a load of cars. So then he polishes all the cars, and wax on, wax off, wax on, wax off. Uh, these are very famous lines for my generation, anyway. Um, we, we, yeah. So, and then he finishes all that. And then he says, "Now we're going to learn karate." And then Mr. Maggie says, "You have already been learning." And Daniel looks at him and goes, uh, "No, I haven't. I've painted fences and waxed cars. That has nothing to do with karate. I need to defend myself, not from a flying fence or a parked car, but from people who want to punch me." Okay. So, um, can you teach me something useful? So then Mr. Maggie starts. He says, "You know, do your wax on, wax off thing, right?" So he, he goes, "Wax on," and then Mr. Maggie throws a couple of punches, and Daniel realizes that his wax on, wax off is actually able to block the punches. Okay, all makes sense? Quick summary of the movie? Good. Um, so that's why I really wanted to paint this fence, because I wanted to be a ninja. So I thought if I can learn how to do this, this you know, I can, whatever, whatever move that would have been useful for, I'm not sure, but, uh, so I really wanted to paint that fence. Uh, and sometimes it's, it's, I think it's, it's, a, it's a very typical lesson for all of us as kids, that we have to do things that we don't understand or don't like because uh, we're told. <laughs> Someone tells us, parent, teacher, whoever it may be, we're told to do something that we don't want to do, but the reason behind it we don't necessarily see yet, but it makes sense in time. It, like, practically everything, I mean, as, as children. I mean, why is it that most children, especially boys, don't want to wash? I mean, it's actually, it's, it's quite a pleasant thing to shower or sit in a bath. Why don't they want to do it? I don't know, I don't want to have a bath. <laughs> I mean, and parents will insist so that you don't stink, so that you will have friends. You know, it's important that you have friends. So they will insist on these things. So they have to do things that you don't want to do because your parent or responsible, whoever it is, understands and sees the bigger picture and knows that these things that you don't necessarily want to do are actually good for you. All right, this is where, in our faith as adults, it's exactly the same. I wish, I wish things were different. I wish things were easier. I wish the, 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 like we kind of grew up in our faith by the time we hit 15, and then from there, it's just you know, on the plateau, just cruising home. It's not that easy, I wish, okay? Uh, it's, uh, it's still a very similar school that we go through. I'm not really sure when it ends, probably when we're six foot under. Uh, it's a, a constant school of the Lord forming us and teaching us, sometimes in ways that we understand, sometimes in ways that we do not. Like yesterday, uh, we spoke about... You know, the idea of, of jumping into the dark, that at times jumping into the dark is a really stupid thing to do. Uh, if, you've, you know, if, if you're just reckless with your time, money, that's, that's a, then jumping into the dark is really stupid. It's, it's, just, it's not a good thing to do. But at times the Lord asks us to do an altum, you know, to, to, to throw it into the deep, to fish during the day, to do something that, that looks a bit ridiculous. We took the example of Noah. Build a ship in a field. Now, these days, if you were to ask to build a ship in a field, people might say, well, it'll be good for glamping, you can turn it into a petting zoo. Back in the day, there, were no, there was no glamping or petting zoo. If you built a ship in a field, you were crazy, out of your mind. And everyone would have looked at him as a madman. This jumping into the dark, why? Because the Lord asks. Because the Lord asks. Uh, so yes, I just want to look briefly at, at Abraham, another patriarch, when the Lord calls him, the Lord says to Abraham, or at the time Abraham, I'm not sure if, I can, if you can hear the difference in the pronunciation there, maybe, maybe I'll just pronounce it Abraham, okay, Abraham and Abraham, Abraham, go out of your country, your family and your father's house to the land I will show you, I will make you a great nation, 
I will bless you and make your name great, and you will be a blessing. You will be a blessing. It's a very interesting expression. You will be a blessing. Then he goes on to say, I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. But he, he says to Abraham, you will be a blessing. So what's the order of proceedings here? The Lord acts first and calls Abraham, but asks him to do something. And just keep, keep in mind a bit of the context here. God hasn't revealed himself to humanity yet. There are no churches. There is no sacred scripture. There is no tradition. There is no catechism. There, have, there are no saints yet. Right? So you have this farmer tending his sheep who hears a voice telling him to leave his land, take his family, and go somewhere. Like, I mean, there's a reason we call him our father in faith. That's, I mean, on a purely human level, that's insane. Take your family up and go, where? I don't know. The voice will tell me. What voice? Who? Whose voice? I mean, like, like again, like, this is like, God is beginning to reveal himself in a, in, in a new way here. So, like, it's not like we would say, today, Jesus said to me, or I, I understood it in prayer, or it was confirmed to me by a reading I got in the Bible. We have something to go on. He's starting from scratch. Right? Up, family, the whole lot, and just start walking. If you do this, you will be a blessing. Can I just stay here and, and not be a blessing? Because I don't really mind. If I'm not a blessing, I'm actually okay with that. I, I kind of like it here. Do I really, do I have, do I, do I have to, go? you could call other people. They're way better than me, way more qualified. Uh, they have better languages. Where are we going? What language do I need? How far are we traveling? What's the story? I'd rather actually, it's nice here. <laughs> it's familiar. I don't need to be a blessing. I'm okay. I'm okay. Thank you, Mr. Voice. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I'm, I, w- I would understand that reaction completely. But, but Abraham goes. I mean, it's, it's, it's just incredible. It's, it's like that, that, that kind of faith that to do the will of God when you have no idea where it brings and you've no idea what it's going to cost you and you've no idea where it ends, but you do it anyway. In his case, because he was getting to know God. In our case, because we love him to go out into the deep, to go into, like missionary, you think of the apostles today who are called and where they ended up going and what they ended up giving. And they had no idea when the Lord said to them, come follow me, that this is where it would end. They had no idea. Andrew crucified, Paul beheaded, St. Peter crucified, James clubbed to death. They had no idea that, that that's where this simple call was going to end up. It's better they didn't, maybe, at the beginning. It's better you don't know. One thing at a time. One day at a time. But they responded in faith. And for them then, like, God's will then becomes their everything. And because of that, they become a blessing. God calls. If we respond positively, then we can become a blessing. I can become a blessing. Now, I can also say, I'd I'd rather not. I'd, I'd rather not. It's, uh, it's too hard or it's too unsure. It's just, I, I don't know what's out there. Go to a place I will show you. I don't know where that place is. If you could tell me first, I can sit down and consider it. I prefer to know what's happening with my life, if that's all right. But that's not always the way the Lord works. A little further then in Genesis chapter 15, we have God's covenant with, Ab- with Abram. And Ab- Abram is complaining that everything that he has built up is going to go to a cousin, Eliezer, because he has no son. Ab- Abram has no son. He's no heir. So, you know, you make all this effort and you, you build up a, a, a you know, you're, you're, you're digging trenches and watering holes and putting up fences and then, you know, you're going to die eventually. You want to leave it to your family that at least it's some good to someone. But he's got no son. Then the word of the Lord was spoken to him again. Eliezer will will not be your heir, but a child born of you, your own flesh and blood, will be your heir. 
Then the Lord brought him outside and said to him, Look up at the sky and count the stars if you can. Your descendants will be like that. Now we've meditated this before, but I just think it really is its very, very beautiful. He says, go out and count the stars if you can. Your descendants, such will be your descendants. He's not so much saying if, but the condition is that, trust me, fulfill my will and this, this will happen. But what's interesting is the next part of, of, of that reading then is the, the various sacrifices that are made. So there's a, a she-goat and a ram and a turtle dove and these are split. Okay. And then a little further on, it says, as the sun was going down, a great sleep came over Abraham. The implication being that when God says to Abraham, or Abraham, brings him outside and says, count the stars if you can. He did so during the day. He asks him to count the stars during the day. Now, Abraham knows they're there, but you can't see one. But he knows they're there. Such, such is, 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 is God's will, God's plan for us at times. I know it'll work. <laughs> I know it will be good. I just really prefer if we could fast forward to the end. I really prefer if if I had a a clear idea. As I say, it's actually really better that we don't have a clear idea because I think if we knew everything that that was on our path, it would scare us to death. It's better we just deal with today. Count the stars if you can during the day. You know they're there. You know God's will will work. And what he asks of us is a response of faith, to trust in his will. Will this cost you something? Yes. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. But in today's world, we desperately need people who are willing to be a blessing for others. We need people who are willing to be different and to be a light that shines in the darkness. And to carry Jesus into other people's hearts, into the hearts of the broken and the lost and the sad. We need people who are willing to be filled with the Lord and motivated by his will alone. So we ask the Lord today to make us those people. If not me, then who? If not now, then when? Lord, you have called me and you have asked me to be a disciple, a student, someone who will listen to you and learn from you. And we ask you today, Lord, that we will never refuse you because of our uncertainty, because of our need or desire to control. Lord, may we give our yes to you with confidence that the stars are still there even during the day and that your will is the maximum of our happiness. Amen. So dear brothers and sisters, it's Father Patrick Cahill here. I just want to thank you so much for all of your generosity over uh, our Christmas appeal. Thank you so much for uh, all that you've done for us in supporting us financially uh, and also for your prayers. Thank God we reached our target so we're able to continue Uh, forming the hearts of young people to know, love, and serve the Lord more deeply. This is all possible uh, uh, in the way that the church always is. We rely on each other. We support each other. There are some who speak. There are some who support. There are some who pray. Uh, We're all in this together. So thank you so much for your part uh, in this story and in the success of Holy Family Mission. We pray for you every day, especially on Wednesdays, where we offer our Mass uh, to St. Joseph, the Father of all providence, uh, also for your intentions. So may the good Lord reward you always. God bless.